So, knee passive physiologicals now. We're going to work on flexion first of all, followed by extension. So when we're working in flexion, um, we need to bear in mind that what we have in front of us, and quite often when you practice, you're going to be doing it on a knee that is relatively normal and has a good large range of movement. There are some knees where, for instance, that could be it for flexion, and you need to work out a way of being able to deal with this restriction in range. So I'm going to show you a few different ways that you can try to cope with their different ranges whilst doing your grade 1 to 4 in those positions. So we take this as an example, for instance, here, where, where say that was their end of flexion range. Then we can obviously just use our body to support, and then what we have is the bed here is our restriction. So we can go from extension into flexion. Say this was, we were testing the range, and I said, yeah, that is my point of pain. Then I may want to do my grade 1 just here, before resistance and then that would be it. Okay, or well, we could say just drop them down into this position and actually use the bed then as my restriction so I know I'm not going to go through the point that I want to work them on. If I wanted my grade 2, I could keep the same position and it's just larger. Let's just say we want to get into grade 3 or 4 so again we can test our range, we can come up and say, ouch, that's my painful point there. So I don't want to go any further than that. And, we'll, and we're imagining now that this is in resistance, remember. Then our grade three, we can just slightly straighten it. And then we're going to take it here, going through resistance into flexion, using the bed as my stop point. So I won't go too far. I can't now take them past that point of the range that they've said that they can work within. Same with my four. It could be my end of range just working here. Now, of course, in this position, what I'm actually trying to do is really lift Neil's knee uh, from, from the ankle. What you may be needing to do actually is much more of a force pushing down towards the bed because actually you've got resistance you're trying to work through, remember. You can do that at any, any sort of number of angles. For instance, their range could be restricted here. So how can you support? So you can take them from here up, they then say, this is the point at which I feel pain, support their leg, take it slightly further, just slightly away from their point of pain, remember, you don't want to go up to it, you want to go just before that point of discomfort, and then I can work my range in here, that's where they say the pain is, great, here's my grade one, or here's my grade two, or of course, if this was in resistance, this would be my three, and then this would be my four. So you can really play with this control of the leg, but you do need to ensure you are in control of it. Yeah, so make sure you, you kind of get hold and support so that they're not trying to support their leg. They need to be relaxed to allow you to do that passive movement. Obviously, if you're getting towards the end of range, um, as in their, their anatomical um, range, then of course, if, if say they had their restriction here, so this could be either a point of pain, if it was pain before resistance, so I could then work up to with my grade one. So I'm actually using, I'm using a visual cue here to see the point, the line at which I want to get to on the bed. Or I could try to drop them down, so as you get up to here, you end up doing a lot of sort of sliding, but you could try to just take it so their foot hits the bed at that point that you want. Or you use your visual check. Same with your larger amplitudes, so your two or your three, depending upon whether it's resistance or pain, that is your limiting factor. And then in towards your end of range with your grade four. Okay, but again, I'm supporting and controlling so that they feel held. Don't kind of do it in this position here. They, they've got to feel that support. Coming into extension, if they have an extension deficit, I mean, anything that is considered flexion really is going to be kind of, you know, from here onwards, anything from here downwards is going to be considered our extension deficit. So when we're coming into extension, what we can therefore do is support under here. If you're feeling strong, and of course you can work in this range, so then I'm now lifting, so my emphasis is that movement, not that movement, into extension. Okay, so I can test my range, find pain or resistance, then work up to it with a grade one, with a grade two, 
if that was resistance there, then it would be my grade 3 going through, or my grade 4, and or we could add other things. So I can just lower this leg down, popping that just underneath the knee. Okay, so assuming they have this amount of range available, we're coming into extension here. So now I can support from above, taking it up into extension. Okay, or if they were getting perhaps more towards terminal extension. Or, if we're really pushing towards the end of range, then maybe they have the ability to hyperextend. And again, we can therefore use something like this to ensure that we get that gap to be able to truly lift their knee into hyperextension to do our grades. Okay, so we know the sizes. One, small amplitude, out of resistance. Two, large amplitude, out of resistance. Three, large amplitude, into resistance. And four, small amplitude, in resistance and going towards the end of range. As an alternative for extension, the thing we can do is lay them prone, make sure you've got the adjustable end of the bed um, where their feet are, and then what we can actually do is use that as a restriction. So for instance, let's say Neil is not able to, flex, uh, to extend his knee past this position here, what we can do is we can raise the bed up, so that is his comfortable zone there, so he's able to relax now in this position, I can now use the bed as my block. So from here, I can then take it from flexion, into his point, he identifies, yep, that is definitely not causing pain. We've brought the bed up to the right point, so we're not taking them too far. And then, for instance, if it was a grade 1, 2, 3, or 4, depending on whether this is in resistance or not, more than likely it's going to be a 1 or a 2. Then we can just take, so for instance, a 1. We're taking it up towards that point with a relatively small amplitude of movement. Or our 2 could be much larger. As they start to increase their range, and of course all we do is we lower the bed down at the set points that we can then take them to. If they did start to get towards terminal extension, perhaps they're not quite there, then again we can just use things like foam pads, and that can then become my point, my target. So again, we're just coming from here, ensuring that there's no pain at that point, so remember we don't go through pain when we're treating, and this again could be my grade one or indeed my grade 2. And of course if it was in resistance that could be my 3 or my 4 also. Knee rotation. So this is the passive physiological now, not the accessory, the passive physiological. Bring the knee up into um, around 90 degrees of flexion. You need to ensure that they're nice and supported. Remember it's passive so they need to be relaxed. We're going to take it into medial rotation, then you're going to try and rotate as much as you can from the calcaneum. So we're supporting here. My thumb, if you, this is what it looks like on the other side, is held essentially like that. So we're coming up and across on towards the um, lateral malleolus, supporting the femur at this end, and then we're going to take it, gripping the calcaneus here, round into medial rotation. Okay, so testing our range into medial rotation, and then, of course, we can do our grades, so grade 1, grade 2, a bit more emphasis of movement. You can also watch and see the amount of movement this end, as well as checking them. Grade 3, into resistance now. And grade 4. For lateral rotation, if you spin around and come onto the medial side, so you're gripping the calcaneum almost in the palm of your hand, okay, and then you're going to bring your arm across. Now try not to pull on their foot this way, because you end up with a lot of movement coming through the rest of the foot. So bring your forearm across, strong grip of the calcaneum, and then holding again onto the um, femur here, and we're going to take it round into lateral rotation. Okay, and then we can do our grade one. Grade 2, into resistance now, grade 3, 
Emphasis is on the calcaneum. And then grade 4 towards the end of range. As an alternative for rotation, we can also have the patient lying prone. We flex the knee. Obviously, I'm working on the opposite side as I was earlier. And now what we're going to do is we're going to be able to control now much more from the calcaneum and just in and around the medial lateral malleolus so that you're affecting the tib and fib. Okay? So if we come into lateral rotation, so gripping the calcaneum, distal tib and fib by the malleolus, we can come into lateral rotation here. Okay, and then we can do our grade one. Grade 2, again out of resistance. Grade 3, into resistance now. And grade 4, small amplitude towards the end of range. The medial rotation, same thing, same grip, just the opposite direction. So we round into medial rotation here, testing the range. We can do our grade one, grade two, larger amplitude, grade three, into resistance, grade four.